Well, good morning. Let's all stand up. Let's enter into a time of worship this morning. Sing this out. Who breaks? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Shakes the whole earth with holy thunder. Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me That chaos back into order. Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of Glory, the King of Glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of Glory, the King above all kings. Is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be saved. the lamb who was slain and worthy is the king who conquered and grave worthy is the lamb who was slain and worthy is the king who conquered and grave and worthy is the lamb who was slain and worthy is the king who conquered and grave worthy is the lamb for me
give you my life, I give you my trust, Jesus. You are my God, you are While you're doing that, uh, in Romans 8, uh, Paul talks about um, being a follower of Christ. And he says, you know, uh, if, you're, if you've been made right with God, if you're a follower of Jesus, then Jesus lives in you. And then he goes on and he says, the Spirit, God's Spirit lives in you. But listen to what he says. He says, the Spirit of God, this is if you're a follower of Jesus, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Think about that for a second. If you are a follower of Jesus, then the same Spirit, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus, Jesus died on a cross for your sin and mine, and He was in a tomb for three days, and He rose to life. And the same Spirit that did that lives in you and lives in me. So whatever you've brought with you into this room today, whatever burdens you're carrying, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus 
from the dead lives in you. And he can raise your hopes from the dead. And he can raise broken relationships up from the dead. He can take any situation that we face where there is death and he can bring new life. And I want to encourage you today to trust him. As we continue to sing, as we continue to worship him with a song that is all about Jesus rising from the dead, I want you to know this morning that you can trust him. Be a person of hope because his spirit lives in you. If you want to come pray about anything today at these altars, come pray. If you want to be anointed, uh, come to, to Kyle or I and we'll anoint you and pray with you. But let's worship the God who's resurrecting spirit lives inside all those who call upon the name of Jesus.
we pray, I just feel compelled to say, I, I mentioned that if, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you've been made right with God, then the Spirit lives in you. But if you're here today and, and you're not a follower of Jesus, or you're not even sure if you're a Christian or not, there's no better day than today. There's no better time than right now. And so as we pray, I want to I want to invite anybody in this room or anybody watching online just confess your sin to God. Say God, I need you. And I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, and I want to spend the rest of my life following you and giving you thanks for what you've done. Just pray that prayer in your own words this morning. It will change your life. Your life will never be the same because from that point on, when you make that decision, decision, the Holy Spirit will live inside of you and he will begin to transform you from the inside out. If you need to pray that prayer this morning, then, then join us as we pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you. You sent your own son to take our sin upon himself to pay a price that we could never pay. And as he hung there on that cross, bleeding and dying, I can't even imagine what that was like for you. But we give you praise today, Father, that that wasn't the end of the story. Three days later, he rose, our Savior rose from the dead, triumphing over death and, and hell and sin. You did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. And we thank you for that. Father, I do pray that for anybody in this room right now or, or for anybody who is watching online who doesn't know you, I pray that today would be the day we know that your Holy Spirit has already been moving in that person's life. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be watching online. So, Father, we all collectively confess to you that we are sinners and we are lost without you. But we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for the transformation that you bring about in our lives. Because, Father, we don't want to be the same person tomorrow that we are today. Continue to transform us, Father, as, as Kyle preaches your word to us. We know that your word changes us. When we allow it to take root in our hearts, it changes us. I pray that that would happen with each, with each one of us today. As your spirit anoints Kyle as he preaches your word. And as our ushers come forward, Father, we continue to worship you in a tangible way by giving back to you what you've given to us. Pray that you would receive these gifts and use them to empower us and to help us proclaim from the mountaintops that there is a Savior who died for the sins of the world and rose on the third day. We love you, God. We give you thanks. We trust you. In Jesus' name. Well, good morning and welcome to Pit Naz. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. If this is your first time visiting with us, then we just wanna let you know how excited we are that you're a part of our Pit Naz family as well this morning. We also wanna ask you to just take a moment and fill out a connection card. And when you're done, you can drop that in one of the offering boxes located on either side of the sanctuary as you're leaving. Also, don't forget to grab a gift bag. That's our gift to you. It's our way of saying thank you for being here with us this morning. So please make sure to grab one of those. And then if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to stop by the information desk out in the main lobby. There's some people out there who would love to say good morning to you and to answer any questions that you might have. Also, if you're new to Pitnaz, we wanna invite you to a class called Starting Point. At Starting Point, you can learn more about our church, you can learn more about how to get connected, and you have a chance to ask questions. 
The next one is going to be Sunday, October 8th at 1130 a.m. It's in room 107, just outside the West Sanctuary door. We hope we'll see you there. Hey, we have several events coming up over the next couple of months that we want to make sure that you know about and that you have on your calendar. The first one is our men's fishing trip, and that's coming up on October 6th and 7th. That's a Friday and Saturday, and it's going to be a blast. So guys, make sure to get that on your calendar. You're not going to want to miss it. And then ladies, we have an event for you too. It's coming up on November 18th, and it's gonna be a special night of worship. And so we would love to have you be a part of that. But if you want to be a part of it, make sure to get signed up by October 15th. That's the deadline. So if you'd like to be a part of it, make sure to let us know by then. And then last is our trunk and treat, and that's coming up on October 31st. That's a Tuesday evening, and this is just a fun, exciting, safe event for the kids of our community where we just hand out a ton of candy, and it is a blast, but we need your help. We need a ton, 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 ton of candy. We always seem to run out, and so if you would like to donate candy, we would love to have you do that. But we also need people who would be willing to come and park their vehicle and just hand out candy to kids as they come through. And so this is an awesome opportunity to just provide a fun, safe event for the kids of our community, and we would love to have you be a part of that. So if you have any questions on any of these announcements, don't hesitate to let us know. Hey everybody, we've been working hard to renovate our Next Steps process. Next Steps is an intentional process to help you connect more deeply with God, with your church family, and with the world around you. To find out more about what we offer, go to the church website and look under the Next Steps tab. To find out when we offer the next classes that are coming up, go to the Groups tab, or you can go to the website's calendar. There's something there for everybody. No matter where you are in your journey with Christ, there's something there for you. Check it out today. Well, as we wrap it up this morning, I just wanna remind you that for more information on all of these announcements and so much more, make sure to check out our website. And then we would love to connect with you on social media. We have a Facebook page, we're on Instagram and Twitter. So please come and find us. We would love to connect with you. And then as we move into today's message, we just wanna remind you to go out and find us under the events section of the YouVersion Bible app. There is a bunch of information out there. We have scripture for today's message. We have Bible reading plans. There's small group curriculum. There's announcements and so much more. So please make sure to go check that out under the events section of the YouVersion Bible app. Well, that wraps it up for me this morning. Have a blessed day. Good to see you today. Wanted to just say a quick thank you. Uh, last week, we asked the church to get involved in uh, putting an offering together for Deidre's mom, Karen Johnston, and you together raised $3,200 for Karen. Um, and so give yourselves a hand. That is awesome. That, that, uh, that's just an awesome way to say thank you. Um, Karen wanted you to know thank you, and so we appreciate that. We are in a series uh, called Written in Stone. We're looking at the Ten Commandments, which we find in Exodus chapter 20. And today, we're talking specifically about rest today. Let's read this. You need rest to be your... Let's read it again. You need rest... Yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so we're going to participate together for just a second, okay? You have to raise your hand, or we would like for you to raise your hand, if you've ever in your entire life, ever at least one time, ever, said these statements, okay? You ready? I need a break. Okay? We have some liars in here, because I know we've all said this. 
I am so tired, I can't even keep my eyes open. Boom. Okay. All right, no one said this, but just in case, I'm going to lose it. Okay. Why are you pointing at the person you said? Okay. I am so stressed out. Some of you are lying. <laughs> All right. I've heard this one before. I've said it too. I can't handle one more thing. Yep. Some of you are putting both hands up. Uh, I could go to sleep right now. Okay. okay. Not right now. But okay. Uh, last one. That preacher puts me to sleep. Leah! <laughs> oh, we are talking about rest today, okay? None of us need to feel tens tense about this because we all stink at it, all right? Turn to your neighbor and say, you stink at it, right? We do. We stink at this. We busy up our schedules. I know when we get a night off, sometimes one of us will look at the other one and say, well, what are we going to do? We don't know how to deal with having time off. And God understood this about the Israelites. And so him and Moses started talking. And at some point, God had a lot of things that he wanted to say to the Israelites because Sabbath was not the only thing that they were messing up with. And so he created these laws called the Ten Commandments. And he chiseled them on the stone there on Mount Sinai. And Moses took them down to the people. But before that, he chiseled several things. And we've already talked about the first thing that he chiseled was, hey, you got to worship me first, okay? The second one is a lot like the first one. Don't have any idols. You can't put something else ahead of me. Also, I don't like you misusing my name. And so we talked about that last week. We learned that in vain means empty or meaningless. And he said, don't use my name in an empty or meaningless way. And then he gets to this today, okay, that we're looking at, the fourth commandment. He said, don't forget to observe the Sabbath day. And by doing that, I want you to keep it holy. And we're going to talk about what that looks like. He said, you have six days each week for your ordinary work. How many days do we have? Six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to who? Yeah, to the Lord your God. And on that day in your household, um, you, may do, you may not do any work. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. And this includes your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days, we see this in the book of Genesis, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day, what did God do? He what? He rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as, as holy. So we see this fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Okay, so first of all, the question may come to us, why do we need rest or why do we need Sabbath? And I read a, qu a quote of a pastor friend of mine. And he said, life moves to a better place when we move at a sustainable pace. Life moves to a better place when we are allowed or we choose to move at a sustainable pace. Pace. The word Sabbath, when you look it up in the smart book, says that it's talking about rest or ceasing from work. And this creates the tension for us because if I were to ask you, and you're to be honest, I'm not going to, many of you are workaholics, myself included. We tend to overwork. We tend to overthink. We tend to busy up our schedules. And God says for us to be our very best we need Sabbath. And when you start studying what Jesus and, and the Lord are talking about, he's basically saying that we need Sabbath to rest and to worship. You know, there is something about coming together and, and worshiping together in this space and, and singing. Some of these songs we sang today, that song that Kylie just slayed up here just a minute ago, that song just gives me goosebumps. That should just stir something in, inside of you forever. He is glorified. Forever he is lifted high. God says once a week, but every day, but once a week you need to set aside time to really worship me. 
And so David, he writes about this, and we read this at funerals, and we, and we comfort people with this when they're in the middle of affliction. But it also uh, relates to what we're talking about today, because the Lord is my shepherd, David says, and I have all that I need. He lets me, he lets me in green meadows, and he leads me beside peaceful streams. Now, some of us, you know, maybe have been a part of a, a church before where they, you know, and actually we were as kids where they preached that you can't go fishing on Sunday, which is why we left that church. Uh, <laughs> you can't do anything on Sunday. You need to sit around and do nothing and all this kind of stuff. And the Israelites, you know, God had a specific set of rules for them in the Old Testament because Jesus hadn't come. And, and Jesus comes and he says, don't get tied up on the exact day. By the way, the Sabbath is actually Saturday. It's actually from Friday evening until Saturday evening. Jesus said, don't get tied up on the day. You see, the Sabbath, it was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. Let me read that again. The Sabbath was made, these are Jesus' words. If you look these up, they're in red. Everything red in a Bible is Jesus' words. The Sabbath was made to meet what? The needs. Why did Jesus create Sabbath? Because you get cranky when you don't have rest. Some of you are cranky right now. Your kids are shaking their head off. Jesus is saying, look, you're getting too, you're getting like Pharisee about it. You're focused on meeting the requirements when really the Sabbath was created because you need a break. And you don't work great if you don't have a break. That's what Jesus is essentially saying. Jesus says, work for six days and find a day to have Sabbath. I'll be honest with you. Sunday is not a Sabbath day for me. This is, it's a great day. It's a day of worship and it's a productive day, but I wouldn't call today a day of rest. So for me, Sunday is not necessarily my Sabbath day. And for you, if you go out to eat, when you order food, the people who are serving you the food, Sunday is not a day of rest for them either. If you cut your finger off out in the shop and you need to go out to the hospital, you expect those doctors and nurses to be out there. That's not a day of rest for them. And Jesus understood this. Don't get caught up on the day. Realize every one of us, we need some time to reset and recharge. Man, some of you are just really getting into this. I come to church and they told me to take a break. To reset, recharge, and refocus. And when we don't reset and recharge and refocus, you know, if our life is like a cup, thought I was going to say a box of chocolates, didn't you? If our life was like a cup and it's full, there's only so much that can go in there. And when we don't ever reset and recharge and empty out, we get stressed and we get full of anxiety and people don't like us. So we've got to have a fresh perspective. We need time to rest. When we have that Sabbath, it gives us a fresh perspective. It also allows us to renew some relationships. You know what I did yesterday? I did it two weeks ago and today, or yesterday, and I hadn't done it for five or six years. I went fishing. You guys like to fish? Some of you do, some of you don't. Noah and I, we went out to John Prince's house. John fried us up a mess of fish, and we ate. And right before we're getting ready to leave, John says, hey, you want to go fishing? I said, I don't want to drive clear down in your pasture to the ponds. He goes, no, I got one right next to my house. Got a bunch of fish in there. About the third cast, I caught a four and a half pound bass. Come on, clap. That's awesome. I'm also very humble. So, you know, we we stood out there and not only did we catch, I caught that fish, but Noah and I, we didn't have one of those little black things that you look at all the time and do stuff with because you can't really fish and do one of those. You can't do that. We got to stand out there and talk. And have some relationships renewed. And by the time we left there, it was the most relaxing thing. When you have Sabbath, it's an opportunity to renew relationships with God or with God and with each other. There's something physiological that happens when you take a nap, when you rest. Pastor Jim, who I see sitting back there, he used to say, the most spiritual thing you can do sometimes is take a nap. 
I think this is true. I think some of the people that are in jail are in jail because they didn't honor the fourth commandment. Really, think about it. Have you ever exploded on someone because you're tired? Have you ever said something you shouldn't have said, and really it wasn't about what they did or you did? You were exhausted. I've heard people say this before, and it's true. No discussion at 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night is ever going to turn out very well because your child's tired, and you're tired, and the dog's within distance to kick, and nothing good's going to happen, right? Just kind of getting ready for this. Um, When you don't get enough sleep and you don't get enough rest, you're more likely to have heart disease. This is like a trip to the doctor. Heart attack, diabetes, obesity, easy. A lack of sleep, right? We are not our best when we don't have rest. We need rest to be our best. So here's a few things this morning we got to realize about, about Sabbath time. You know, the truth is, is this is one that we're, we think is... This, we think this sermon is for weak people. The problem with that is, is God said that we all need it. If you take a break, you're weak. If you, if you go home at the, you know, at the appropriate time, you're weak. But here's what, here's what we need to realize. And as we were studying this, the word unhurried time kept coming up in, in the commentaries. People need unhurried time to rest and worship each week. Let's read that. People need unhurried time to rest and worship each week. Now, just using my personal family as an example, my daughter and me are exactly the same. If you were to read our, and I know some of you personally, and you're similar this way. If you were to read my personality profile, there's times where I like to chill. And my daughter, Grace, is the same way. You know, we can go, 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 but we got to chill at times. Raise your hand if you like to chill, right? When I go on vacation, now the rest of my family's not this way, but when I go on vacation, I just want to chill. But some of my family and some of you, you got a to-do list, everything that you want to accomplish, and you're more wore out after vacation than you are before you took vacation. But Sabbath is about unhurried time. You need time, whether it's whatever day it is. You have to have some time. Hopefully you have it every morning or in the evening with the Lord, but you need some unhurried time. You remember Andy Griffith? Some of you younger ones are like, who's that? Andy Griffith was one of my favorite shows. I still like to watch the reruns of it. There's an episode called Man in a Hurry, and his car breaks down outside outside of town, and he's wanting to get his car fixed on Sunday, and they won't do it. Howdy, Wally. Andy. Wally, this year's Mr. Tucker. Oh, watch your foot. I'm going to rock forward. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Tucker's car broke down. He, he needs some mechanical work. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Where's your car now? About two miles out of town on Highway 43. Now, tell me, uh, what did she sound like before she stopped on Well, choked up, it seemed to me, like it wasn't getting any gas. Well, he's, he's got gas in the tank, though. Lots of gas. Did it sound something like this? First it ran smooth, then it uh, kind of... Then it uh, ran smooth again, then another... Then... uh, Then she dies. Yes, that's it. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. You got yourself a clogged fuel line. How'd you know that? From the sound. He'll fix it for me, then. Be happy to? Fine, fine. Just an hour's work. We'll uh, tour in tomorrow morning. Get right on it. Say, did you see Moon Mullins yet, Andy? Yeah, at breakfast. Oh, now, don't tell me. Let me find you. Tomorrow her. morning. <laughs> I've got to get that car fixed now, today, this minute. I've got to be in Charlotte. Can't you understand that? I couldn't do it. We're closed on Sunday. You refuse to help me, then? Well, if it was an emergency. It is an emergency. Uh, Mr. Tucker, if... We're kind of like that guy, aren't we? We got to have it right now. We're in a hurry. At the end of this show, that specific episode, the man began to realize that unhurried time is important. We don't make it that important, and we always, that's the first thing out the window. 
But God created us. We believe in creationism. We believe that God created us. If you're new today, we believe that God breathed into you. The Bible tells us that he knows, some of us are bald, but he knows the number of hairs or lack thereof that are on our head. Every single one of you. My daughter has got a full head of hair and the Lord knows exactly how many she has on her head. He created each one of you. He gave you gifts. He gave you strengths. He knows what your weaknesses are. He has a plan and purpose for you. And he says, whether you agree with him or not, you need a break. And you need rest. The Bible says, talks all the time about laziness and being a sluggard. The Lord's not talking about being lazy. How many days a week are we supposed to work according to that scripture? Six days. That's a pretty good ratio. But one day a week, we need to find unhurried time. Did you notice the mechanic in there said, I'm closed on Sunday. Whatever day it is for you, there needs to be a day where you say, I'm kind of closed today. I'm just going to chill. We need to realize that today. And here's the thing. If you don't realize that you need unhurried time, someone else is going to realize that you need unhurried time. And remember, when you don't get unhurried time in your schedule each week, it will show. I love this statement. It's okay with God. For you to say no to work and yes to rest once in a while. Elbow somebody. Let's read this. It's okay with God for you to say no to work and yes to rest once in a while. Sometimes you have to say no to a good thing. Let me give you an example. Let me finish that. Sometimes you have to say no to a good thing so you can say yes to the right thing. To give you an example, one time, well, more than once, a lot, my wife will say, are you going to answer that text while we're eating dinner? And the text may be a good thing. Someone's got a need or someone's talking about something spiritual. But the right thing to do is to not answer it. That makes sense? It's okay to say no to good things so you can say yes to the right thing. Can I tell you something? Your child doesn't have to play every sport under the moon. You don't have to sign up for every community leadership activity there is in Pittsburgh. It's okay to say no to good things. And let me just say this as a pastor, and it's a risk saying this because you always need volunteers in church. But sometimes the church can busy up a person's schedule just as much as anything else. I remember I was at a youth specialties conference when I was a youth pastor. And the guy up front spoke, and we went with a group of youth pastors. And right off the bat, the guy gets up and he said, your church probably spent $500 to $1,000 to send you to this. And if you're here with your spouse and you two aren't getting along, or you're here with someone else and you two aren't getting along, another staff member or whatever, he said, skip the conference and go get it it right. In other words, nothing else is going to matter if this isn't right. I thought, man, that's that's a cool thing to say. This guy gets the big picture. Say no to a good conference, he was telling people. If you need to go and make right the right thing. I think that we're saying yes to too many good things. And we're, and we're not saying yes to the right things. I remember as a kid, we went to, my parents were friends with another couple. And we went to their house. And their house was always kind of messy, pretty messy. And I remember one time it was brought up and the lady said, you know, in our house we make other things a priority. We go outside and we play with our kids instead of keeping the house clean all the time. Now, there's a balance to that, right? There's a balance to that. But you know, if your house is clean all the time, but you never hang out with your kids, what's it matter? 
You see, when you say yes to cleaning the house all the time or saying yes to trips all the time for your work or yes to working out in the shop all the time, you have to realize for every yes, you're saying no to something else. When you say yes, there's less of you for something else. That creates a tension for me because I'm not always very good at this. That's why it's so quiet in here because all of us struggle with this. What do you need to say no to so you can say yes to rest and worship? You're not living someone else's life. You're living your own life. Well, they don't ever take a break. They don't ever rest. They have to answer for their life. You know what we exalt in our culture is success. Jimmy Johnson, who used to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys and won three Super Bowls, when he got the Dallas head coaching job, he told his wife, I don't have time for you. And they got a divorce so that he could focus on the Super Bowl. He even said it on ESPN, so I'm not putting words in his mouth. What we exalt is making a lot of money and being successful. In the meantime, we've had three or four or five, six failed marriages and our family's fallen apart, but we've, we've done all this over here. And as we follow God, Scripture tells us that as Christians, we are called to be a peculiar people. And sometimes churches will take that word peculiar and they think that means you got to put a bun on your head and wear all these clothes and, and be judgmental and, you know, like the Pharisees were in the New Testament. And Jesus is like, no, it's not about all that. Peculiar means that, that you march to the, the drum of the Holy Spirit. That you realize that, that I am where, what fills you up and not alcohol or drugs or all these physical, tangible things. You realize that what fills you up comes from me. And what makes you peculiar is when everybody else is working themselves into a tither, you realize that once a week... In our church and many churches... As someone becomes a believer and says, you know, they follow God, we teach them about the principle of tithing. Not because the church does or doesn't need the money. It's about a way to worship the Lord. And what the Bible tells us is that when we give 10% of our income to God, he does more with the 90% than we can do with our 100%. And to, be, and to tithe faithfully, it's a faith and trust thing. And when we're walking with God and we think about this whole Sabbath concept, I think it's pretty much the same. If we trust that God, through his spirit, that we can produce in six days what someone who doesn't have God can produce in seven days. If we have the faith to say, God, I'm going to trust you. I really can't afford on paper to take a break because business is, is not doing what it's supposed to or we're really behind or we want to save or we want to do this or not. We could really just use that extra day. But Lord, your word tells us that we need a break and we need time together as a family. And maybe everybody else is in every travel sport known to man or everybody else is doing all these different things and going all these different directions or everybody else is going to the football game tonight or everybody else is going and, and working or doing whatever. You know, I can't think of what the examples could be, but you know where I'm going with this. Everybody else is doing this. But Lord, I want you to be the center of my life. And I can't understand on paper, but we are taking a time out tonight and we are going to have Sabbath. Because God can do in you in six days what you think you need seven to do. Amen. Identify who or what has a tendency to prevent Sabbath in your life. Now, I'm going to be honest. When I ask that question, you want to know in my life what prevents me from having Sabbath? Me. 
What about you? Put your kids to bed earlier so you and your, your spouse can have some time. Single mom or single dad, put your kids to bed so you can recollect yourself. Maybe you need to get up 15 or 20 minutes earlier and go sit out on the deck with a cup of coffee so you can have Sabbath time with God. Maybe I need to go to John Prince's house more often and go fishing. We're so busy, and that's why it's so quiet in here, because we all, me, I'm first, we all stink at this, every one of us. God said, be busy for six days, but one day a week, don't be so busy. Create some unhurried time in your schedule. Because I know right now, most of the people in here on this service is a little bit different age category than the others. But in here, a lot of people are in, you're busy raising kids, or you're a college student. Or you're in your 50s and you're still working and you're grandpa or grandma. You're not going to be able to find it. You're going to have to create unhurried time because it's not there. Those of you who are on a budget, you understand a budget's there for a reason because if there wasn't a budget, you wouldn't use it. You have to budget time, unhurried time in your schedule. And then you have to protect it. Every once in a while, people will invite us over to their house, just like you guys get invited. And we'll say no to that good thing. Because if we don't, that's the only night we'll have all week. Other times we'll say yes. But there are times that we say no. Because if we don't, we don't have any Sabbath time. So create. I want to challenge all of us. Find some time. Find some time with your kids. Maybe instead of paying the bills... Or doing the dishes, mom or dad. Go outside and play catch with your child. My kids are into riding their bikes. And Whitney's really good about taking them on bike rides. And she told me, she said it to me a lot. But she said, one of these days, you're going to wish that you went on those bike rides with me and the kids. So I got on the bike and I went with them. I'm doing a little better. Don't miss life because you're doing life. You're not Superman. You're not Superwoman. It's going to catch up with you. You need rest and worship. That's the purpose of Sabbath. You need rest to be your best. Keeping the Sabbath day holy is about weekly rest and worship. It's understanding that we were created. Let's read this together. We were created to run. We were created to work. We were created to do things with excellence. And we need rest and worship to consistently. When I was a kid, my dad would always tell me, do not go swimming on the day you have a baseball game. Don't run a bunch. Don't eat a bunch. You know, why? Because you're getting ready to work. You're getting ready to play, and you want to be your best. And if you're tired, you can't be your best. Not so much this service, but before the 830 service, I was asking people, how you doing? You would not believe how many said, I am so tired. So... Are you getting weekly rest and worship so that your soul can be filled? Go fishing. Read a book. Take your vacation days. Sleep in a little bit someday. Make your kids go to bed so you can go to bed. Amen? Let's stand together.
Lord Jesus, we know this is a very straightforward principle. But Father, we know that we're not always the best at this. Father, help us to be better stewards of rest. There's things you want to say to us and do in us and through us. Lord, I think of the times where I'm able to connect with one of my family members and it's always usually time that we've set aside to do something fun or spend time together. And Lord, you want that same time. Sabbath allows us to love you better and love others better. Father, rather than feeling guilty during this next song, Lord, would you just show us ways that we can create Sabbath so we can connect with you, connect with each other. Yes, 
things I'm excited about is that our church has invested in a place of Sabbath for college students called the Homestead. And I know this weekend is family weekend at Pitt State, and so there might be some families in town. And so Age wanted you to know if you're a college student or parent of a college student, we have a place over here called the Homestead. Been a lot of people in the community asking, what is the Homestead? It's a place for you to go get Sabbath do your homework, eat, hang out, just a couple houses down. If you would like to know about the homestead or go tour it, if you're in town, uh, Pastor Age and Ray, Age is back over there by the door. He's got his hand in the air. You can meet him after the service. So if you'd like to do that, we encourage you to do that. David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leads me beside quiet waters. So may you go fishing. May you take a nap. May you go in the backyard and hang out with your kids or your grandkids. May you say no to a good thing so you can say yes to the right thing. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Happy Sabbath day.